Greetings game designers, this is the second tutorial in Game Fruit. Just go ahead and click on the tutorial file. If you saved it properly, it will save your progress. We're going to go to the second scene. And what we're going to do in this video is teach you how to use the prefab teleporter. Okay, so we're going to basically create a secret room somewhere in this kind of unused space. So all we need to do is go and take the eraser tool and start deleting some of the terrain brushes or terrain paint. And just make something simple, you know, just go ahead and delete all this. And let's just think about it as a secret room that the player will teleport to. He will jump over, get a collectible, and then jump into another teleport and to teleport himself out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just add a, a little bit of topography here. Um, something like that. Maybe we'll go one more step up. Okay, something like that. Again, if you make any mistakes, just go ahead and use the eraser tool and uh, fix it. Um, let's make it look like that. That's fine. Um, I'll maybe add a little design the corners here or something like that. All right, let's get started. So to make our life easier, we're going to basically put the teleporter right next to the player. Okay, so we're going to go look for the prefab. And we have a teleporter right here. Now, before we decide to drag this teleporter and put it um, behind the player, let's make sure we make a good decision about what layer we want to put the teleporter in. If I scroll through the kit, it already has a predefined layer for teleporters. So we're gonna click on teleporter here in the layers window. And we're gonna actually now drag and drop the teleporter right behind the player. Okay. Now, as you can see here, it is inside the teleporter layer. Let's go ahead and kind of drop down our box. By default, every single object inside of game fruit will have an x and y position an x and a y scale and a rotation the extra properties that it has is to activate or deactivate we're going to leave it on activate the default player tag is player and this tag is basically refers to who can be teleported by the teleport sprite and that tag is the player which refers to the playable character the last two arguments is the ones that you're going to need to determine the teleport location of the player. Now, remember again that I said this in the previous video. Sprites are referenced by their upper left corner. So when you are placing the location of your teleporter, you're basically looking at where do I want the upper left corner of the sprite to be at? Okay, so think about it as that. Not where the center of my character is, where the upper left of the sprite is, which is this right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the teleporter now. And you can see the teleport location. I'm going to go ahead and pan down. And maybe zoom out a little bit so that we can get it all in one picture. I want the upper left of this character, which is somewhere around here, to be somewhere around here. So I'm looking at the, again, above the properties window, it shows you the X and Y coordinate. So if I go here, it looks like I want to teleport the character to about 350 and 1220. So I'm just rounding here. So I'm going to type in here 350 and 1220. Now, a common mistake by students is that they type in 350 and 1220 in these two fields. These two fields, X position and Y position, is the position of the teleporter. This is not where I want the teleporter. These two positions is where I want the player to be teleported to. So I'm going to put 350 and 1220. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if I did a good job of setting the location for the player. Okay, so it looks like I did a pretty good job. The player just seems like it just teleported right here on the that side of the screen. Now all we need to do is put a teleporter on this side to teleport the player back into uh, um, back outside of this cavern here. So let's go ahead and make another teleporter and again we want to make sure that we put it in the correct layer. I have the teleporter layer here. I'm going to go ahead and drag 
this on this side. Okay, and just like before, you guys uh, see the same properties as before. We have to determine where we want the teleporter to teleport once he touches this. So let's go ahead and put him back somewhere over here. If I use my again my my little mouse cursor, it looks like if I want the upper left corner of the sprite to be somewhere around here, my number is somewhere about 375 and 315. So let's go ahead and type in 375 in 315 and go ahead and hit play and see if we were able to fix this problem or make our teleporter work. So I teleport into the secret cavern. I go over here. I jump into this one and voila, I am back uh, on the platform I started with. Now, some of you guys will have this issue here. When you are entering numbers into the properties window, Sometimes what will happen is that you end up deleting it like this, and then it says not a number, okay? So it basically says, oh, what you typed in is NAN, which stands for not a number. So what you need to do is you need to go back and change this by clicking at the front of the N, okay? So if it says not a number, put your cursor at the beginning of NAN, and just go ahead and override it with the number. Now, I forgot what the number was, but I'm assuming it's somewhere around 400 or so. Okay. And then now we are able to fix this problem where we have NAN. Let's go ahead and hit play. And again, make sure that we didn't break our teleporter. I jump onto this teleporter. I get teleported over here. I jump on this teleporter. I get moved back out. Okay. And the next, the last thing we're going to do for this tutorial is or a few more things we're going to do actually in this tutorial is to go ahead and add a collectible item okay so we're going to go add a collectible item like this and we're going to drag and move it but before i did that i just realized that i'm on the teleport layer do i want collectibles to be on the teleport layer probably not so I'm looking through all the other layers that already exist. And it looks like there's no layer for collectibles. So I suggest that we make one. We make a new layer by clicking on this plus sign on the upper right. And we have a choice between new layer and tile map. We're going to choose new layer. Tile maps are for brushes. So we're going to actually make it a new regular layer here. It's going to defaultly put it at the top. If you double click or click on the triple dot and rename, you can change the name of it. We're going to change this to collectibles. So this will be a layer for all collectibles. Now the next thing we need to determine is if we're going to have a layer for collectibles, what priority should it be given? Now, in most cases, collectibles are going to interact with the player. The player will come touch the collectibles. The collectibles basically disappear. We have to ask ourselves, if a player touches the collectibles, do we want the player to appear in the front or in the back of collectibles? So I think most people will consider collectibles in the more of it in the background. So you can decide the other way if you like. But I'm going to move, drag and click, and therefore move collectibles below player in terms of the drawing priority. So now that we have a collectibles layer, Let's go ahead and click this money bag here, stick it here for the player, make him feel good about finding this secret uh, secret cavern, and then maybe make it scale it up to make it look a little big, and let's see if that works. Okay, looks like I'm teleporting just fine. Looks like I can grab the collectibles. It looks like I can teleport out, and that helps us learn how to make a teleport prefab, how to use a teleport prefab. The last thing I want to teach you on this video is how to create an extra level. Okay, So as you can see in our game, we have the first scene, which is the game fruit controls, the second scene, which is the game level, and the third scene, which is the game over. Now what if you want to add multiple levels to your game? So um, what we can do is click this plus button right here and create a blank layer like this. But this will take too much time. 
I recommend what we do is delete, remove this level, this blank level, and we're just going to duplicate the level two and then modify level two to our liking. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click this instead, click on duplicate level. It's going to defaultly create a duplicate of the level on the last position, which is position four. But now we run into a different problem. This scene system works in order. So this will be the first scene, the second scene, the third scene, the fourth scene. So you can see that we have a problem is that our level is not in the correct order. So to order, in order to change the scenes and the order of the scenes, you're going to click on this down arrow right here and it shows you all four levels. Okay. Now, before we even bother changing the order, let's go ahead and name them because this is not a very good name. To rename it, you have to click on the right arrow here and go to the gear for properties. And this one being the second position is going to be our level one. So we're going to go here to the level name and we're going to change it to level one. And you can see here that it's being edited. I'm going to go to level four here or our scene number four, click on the, the mouse gear or the gear. And I'm going to change this to level two. Suppose that this is going to be my second level of my game. Now that we have uh, the proper names for level start screen, level one, game over, and level two, to change the order, simply click on this double um, bar, click and hold, drag it above the game over screen, and now we have created an extra level in the proper order that we want. Now we can go ahead and check it up here. If I click here, I see the beginning screen. I click here, I see level one. I click here, I see level two and I click here and I see game over. Okay. Well, this is all folks. It's done for video number three. Um, I will see you guys next video.